Well, more bad news for the Ohio State as the Buckeyes junior defensive end Noah Spence suspended for three games following a positive drug test late last season. He's out indefinitely after failing another drug test. And as Mark reports, it's just the latest setback as the Buckeyes try to move forward. Virginia Tech beat Ohio State in part due to a defense that took away the run and forced a young quarterback and offensive line to beat them, something the Buckeyes could not do, perhaps providing a blueprint for other schools to beat OSU. I don't know if people have the personnel. I, I know one of them does. Uh, the team that won the Big Ten last year does. Uh, I don't know if that, that's, that's risky stuff. Now, you hit a couple of those, you know, you get a mismatch somewhere. And, um, you know, they replaced that one corner in the third quarter when we hit a couple plays on them, and the other guy came in is pretty good too. So that's, and you can't really do that. You know, the thing that, I, I, once again, down the road, because I'm friends with their coach, we play them next year, so it'll be a while, but I bet that, was, that wasn't something you put on on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. That's been going on for a while. Quarterback JT Barrett has been the Buckeyes' leading rusher in both games this season. Without much production from the running backs, assistant coach Stan Drayton says there isn't frustration from his position group. Well, no, my room, my room understands uh, defense. They understand the system of defense. That's what they're taught from the moment they walk in the door, and they understand um, if a defense lines up a certain way that they're designed to take away the run game, so they have to be patient in that respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it's a compliment to what we've done here in the past in the run game, uh, the way people are lining up against us right now. But, no, their time will come. Uh, there's value in their play when the ball is not in their hands, and they need to understand that. In today's day and age especially, all those guys have hopes and dreams of playing uh, NFL ball one day. They got to understand that, you know, the back that can do it all is the back that's going to get drafted. So. Meyer certainly knows the Mac well, coaching at Bowling Green for two seasons, and says that league usually comes down to the signal callers. That's why I love the Mac conference. You can march out most in the, in, that team comes out of the locker room, and they all look alike. They're all, usually the, the team with a quarterback wins that conference. <laughs> And there's been some phenomenal quarterbacks come out of the MAC conference. Really good players too, but they just don't have the depth. But it's a really good coaching league because, for the most part, they're all about the same talent-wise. Eight different former Ohio State assistant coaches are head coaches at the Division One level. A couple more Ohio State assistant coaches are head coach at the NFL level. One of those uh, former assistant coaches, Paul Haynes, comes into Columbus to take on Ohio State as he is now Kent State's head coach. And Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And Mike, we, we, we certainly know Ohio State's woes coming off of the loss to mm -hmm. Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. It's an 0-2 Kent State program yeah. coming into Ohio Stadium on Saturday afternoon. But you make a good point about those former coaches. Uh, coach Paul Haynes was a respected guy uh, back in the Jim Trestle days. And maybe that really, as much as anything, is a tribute to Coach Trestle in the decade or so run that he had at Ohio State. And I respect uh, Paul Haynes, and I think he's going to try some stuff defensively a little bit out of the ordinary because uh, because he has really nothing to lose at, at Columbus Saturday and then the game itself, obviously. But. The Golden Flashes have been pretty strong defensively yeah. this season. Gave up 17 points to Ohio mm -hmm. in their week one loss and then 23 points last week to South Alabama. Uh, it's a Golden Flashes team that has shown a lot of life in the second half as they, they made up a, a two-touchdown deficit to Ohio, came back and, and, and tied that game, and Ohio won in yeah. a last-second field goal. South Alabama jumped out to a 16-0 lead, and the Golden Flashes came back to tie that game. Yep. We heard earlier about the respect Urban Meyer has for the quarterbacks in the MAC. Mm -hmm. Colin Reardon has had a, some solid numbers so far for the Golden Flashes. 47 of 81 for 477 yards passing, four touchdowns and just one interception. He's not the type. He's a sophomore, yeah. but he's not the type who's going to beat himself. No, Reardon's a good player. He's a smart player, and and you say he he won't turn the ball over. I think maybe the biggest issue that the Golden Flashes are going to have are they going to be able to run the football? They really struggled with that against Ohio and South Alabama. And, and that's one thing the Buckeyes, sure, they gave up a lot of yardage to Navy, but we know how different Navy was. I, I think the Buckeyes are pretty good against the run. To me, that's going to be the point of contention. If Kent can't run the ball at all, then it could be a, a tough day for the Golden Flashes. You know, we heard earlier this week on Buckeye Insider about a little bit of a Navy hangover where the yeah. defense wasn't quite ready for Virginia Tech because they were still getting over the, the oddball things they had to yeah. prepare against the Navy offense. Mm -hmm. Could there be a Virginia Tech hangover? Because it seems like Ohio State wasn't quite ready to turn the page right away as they kind of wallowed in this yeah. defeat to Virginia Tech. Could Kent State catch Ohio State sleeping? 
I surely would think not, Mark, that there's going to be a, a hangover for Ohio State uh, with this Kent State football team. There, there really are no excuses at this point. I don't care who you're playing. It's third game of the season. It's time to get focused for Ohio State. There's been a road game uh, that, that brought some adversity. There's been a home game that's, bought, that's brought much talked about adversity. Now it's game three against a clearly an undermanned Kent State team. So if there's a hangover now for Ohio State, then we're going to have a whole lot of other things to chew about that we're not interested in. So if the Buckeyes only win this game by 21 points, is that almost a, a loss? You know, I, I'm not big on the perception game there. I prefer that it be a success for Ohio State in terms of them developing what their problems have been, the offensive line, and proving that the secondary can play that sort of press coverage and do it effectively by taking a few chances but covering it up with your safeties and otherwise. So I don't know that the point margin is, is as important as many will apply it to. I would just like to see progress in those problematic areas. You know, we've heard quite a bit from Urban Meyer about we have to get these freshmen more involved. Yeah. Raekwon McMillan ha hasn't played that much. We, we saw him do make, make one good play in mm -hmm. the loss of Virginia Tech. Johnny Dixon has been a guy that's been virtually unheard of after having a stellar spring and you know was practicing with the upperclassmen on the first day of practice Johnny Dixon's been a man forgotten in the receiving corps. Yeah it makes you kind of wonder ultimately what the decision process is for who plays and doesn't play obviously it's also how you practice it's the trust level with the coaching staff but sometimes there appears to be an inconsistency with hype relative to who gets playing time on Saturday and against Kent State you would think you would surmise that some of these guys are going to get opportunities they haven't have like maybe the tight end will finally catch a football all of that is hanging out there now for Ohio State your prediction for Saturday afternoon well I think the Buckeyes are going to really take it to Kent State I have to believe that injuries haven't been a problem for the Buckeyes it's time for the offense to show a little momentum and show some flow uh, with their approach. I think the Buckeyes are going to win big over this Kent State team, Mark, something like like 38-13. to 13. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Of course, Ohio State with a 2-0 career record, again, or all-time series record against Kent State. Both of those wins coming in the uh, 2000, 2002, and 2007. And can't forget, there is a local flavor on that Kent State that team, is. a pair of Kenton Wildcats. Bryce Fackler, a sophomore, is the backup tight end, has played in both of Kent State's games so far this year. Meanwhile, Kenton Wildcat Matt Barr is a freshman on the Kent State team. Probably won't travel to Columbus, but is uh, starting to get his licks in on the college game. Andy, back to you.